fuels and heats of reaction. We're going to be looking at crude oil, what it's comprised of, how to separate it, the various products that we obtain from crude oil, what they are used for, with a note to looking specifically at refinery gas, and um, the composition of petrol, and we will discuss why we need to, to add mercaptans to natural gas. Crude oil is an unprocessed oil containing hundreds of various hydrocarbons. In this state, the hydrocarbons are useless, so scientists had to come up with an idea of how to separate the oil and get it into a situation where the products were usable. It's a very thick, viscous, smelly liquid. And if you've seen any kind of news reports about oil spills, you can see the slick black mass sitting on top of the sea, or in many cases, actually animals covered in this thick oil. Fractional distillation is the method that we use as scientists to separate crude oil into its useful parts. You can see the image there on the top left giving you a brief indication of what is happening. So we'll look a little bit further into this now. So what happens is we have a fractional distillation column. It ranges in size depending on what your product is, so what you need to obtain from that crude oil. Now, there's a fabulous one in Cork, if you're ever there. It's in Whitegate Oil Refinery. It's approximately 50 metres in height, and it contains various trays. And these various trays within the column contain things called bubble caps. If you think about it like a very loosely sieve kind of idea, so... The crude oil is heated to approximately 600 degrees. It's pumped from the furnace then into the column. The amazing thing is these different trays have what we would call bubble caps. These bubble caps, you could liken them to, you know when you open a bottle of Coke and you slowly release the lid and you can hear the gas escaping, that's carbon dioxide. Well, if you think about the gases moving up through the column um, in some cases they can go no further due to their mass um, and we'll discuss that now. On the right hand side of this picture is the various different fractions that we obtain and it'll tell you what they are used for. So the main steps in fractional distillation, number one, crude oil is analysed, they have to analyse it to determine its quality what it contains. In most cases, what they use is a method called HPLC, High Performance Liquid Chromatography. We'll discuss this at a later date. The crude oil is heated to approximately 600 degrees Celsius. It boils and then various substances within it are vaporized. It's pumped in through the bottom of the column and the trays are used to collect the liquids or the gases at each different fraction. Now, it's important to know that the contact time between the vapor and the liquids in the column is really important because it allows for better separation of the substances in the mixture. It has to be maintained at a very high temperature at the bottom. And as you go up the column, the temperature tends to decrease. So going up, temperature decreases, what happens is the larger hydrocarbon molecules condense near the bottom. They have really high boiling points, so as a result of that, they condense down towards the bottom. Whereas the smaller molecules remain vaporized, going all the way up. And then what happens there is when they meet a tray equal to their boiling point, they begin to condense. So, smaller chain lower boiling point hydrocarbons will be found at the top, long chain, higher boiling point hydrocarbons found towards the bottom. Now, looking again in more detail at the different fractions, we're going to talk about some of these. So, at the bottom is bitumen. Now, this is a long chain hydrocarbon consisting of carbon chain lengths of 35 plus. 
its boiling points above 500 degrees so you cannot use it as a fuel where you have seen it used in your day-to-day -day life is on the roads such as tar so the tar is used kind of in between the roads or sometimes it's mixed with a rock mixture to actually lay the roads um it's also used in some cases as waterproofing for roofs so what they do is they would add they would get it to a temperature of approximately 500 degrees melt it and then lay it so because it's quite thick they need to get it into a runnier kind of consistency your lubricating oil which contains carbons 19 to up to 35 their boiling points range from approximately 350 to 500 again cannot be used as a fuel so what they do there is they use it as a lubricating oil so in many cases it's used in engines to prevent wear and tear then you'd have your fuel oil fuel oil is really interested what they do is they would spray these into burners in a fine mist and these fine mists can then be ignited and combusted in many cases this is used in ships or power stations and in some cases heating plants then we have our diesel our diesel oil is difficult to vaporize much more difficult than the likes of petrol and um, therefore if you think about a diesel car versus a petrol car their engines would need to be different it's generally used in larger vehicles and trucks buses trains um, and in some cars now obviously it, there is a problem with using it in cars due to you know it needs a high combustion point so in some cases what we see is it's not very clean burn then you have your paraffin oil generally used in domestic heating or in some cases aircraft fuel and um, you've seen it used in paraffin oil lamps carbon chain lengths from approximately carbon 10 to carbon 14. So remembering as you increase the carbon atom length or sorry the carbon chain length the boiling point increases. Now after this we have our naphtha very very useful it's used in the petrol chemistry industry a lot so the petrol chemical industry uses a lot um, in many different ways so making medicines plastics synthetic fibers detergents in some cases and in many cases solvents approximately carbon chain length of seven to ten the boiling point in this case is approximately 75 to 150 um, and in some cases we see it converted into petrol after this we have our gasoline or our petrol which is our motor fuel um, most people think of petrol as one substance but in fact it's a mixture of up to a hundred different hydrocarbons um, ranging in carbon length from carbon 5 to carbon 10 these are all canes then we would have our petroleum gas also known as refinery gas these are methane ethane propane and butane very low boiling point um approximately 25 degrees celsius they would become a gas so we'd have there our uses on our right hand side column the fraction on our left and the length of the carbon chain in the middle lubricating oil fuel oil and bitumen excuse me are also known as residue fractions these residue fractions because they're left over from what's boiled um when everything else has come off our refinery gas of as we've stated which is our methane ethane propane and butane all are small carbon chains so c1 c2 c3 and c4 we will need to add what we would call mercaptans to these mercaptans are sulfur based products which gives gases an unpleasant smell if you think about the refinery gases as odorless, colourless gases, if you were to have a gas leak, you would not be able to tell. So, for example, in our houses, if you're using um, a gas cooker, when there's a gas leak, you can actually get the odour of mercaptans. This is to notify, obviously, people that if there is a gas leak, you know. 
if this wasn't added, we would have an awful lot of problems in households with fires from gas leaks. Petrol, also known as light gasoline, as we've discussed, contains over a hundred different types of compounds. And again, they are various hydrocarbons. So guys, that's pretty much it with our crude oil and our fractional distillation. We've talked about the fact that, you know, the lower the carbon chain, the lower the boiling point, the higher it'll go in the column. Whilst the longer the chain, the higher the boiling point, the lower down it'll come off in the column. Mercaptans tend to come up as a six mark question um, in question four on the paper. So just be aware of that. 